This is another lesson for Math Pace 1087. And uh, this time we're right after the checkup on page 35 and 36. And now we're talking about formulas. And this is a real life way of solving equations. And uh, so th these are, you're given numbers and you plug them into an equation and then you have to follow the order of operations in order to solve. So sometimes you say, well, I'll never use this in real life. Actually, these formulas you will use in real life. Um, now, I'm going to just give a word to parents, okay? So if you are a student watching this, maybe just ask your parent to watch this and, and see what they think, all right? On page 35, it says memorize these formulas. Now, honestly, as a math teacher, <clears throat> if I... If I was using this with a class, I would gradually, over a period of weeks, keep introducing maybe two you know, per week and work on them and get a lot more practice and gradually build up the memory to just tell students, memorize all, what are there, 10 or 11 or 12 of these, you know, 11 of them, memorize them right now and know them for all the homework and for the checkup and the self-test and the face test. Personally, I think that is a very unreasonable expectation. All right, so my recommendation to uh, students and parents, if it's up to you what you want to do, but my recommendation would be to take these formulas and put them on a 3x5 or a 4x6 card, okay? And then use that card while you're doing the checkup and the self-test. You're using it just to get the formula, all right? And then the real math is involved in plugging in the numbers and solving the equations. So let's take, um, let's take this one right here, the area of a circle. And they tell us that we're going to, for pi, use 3 and 1 seventh. Sometimes we use the number 3.14. But uh, here they're telling us to use this fraction and then telling us that the radius is 7. So we look back here at the formulas and we find area of a circle. Ah, there it is. Pi times the radius squared, okay? So the form, I'm gonna write down the formula. Pi times the radius squared. So now we need to plug in the numbers that, are, that were given here. The radius, we're supposed to use three and one seventh. I'm going to put that in parentheses, and then I'm going to plug in the 7, and that gets squared, okay? What is 7 squared? 14? No. Ah, remember, squared means you take the base times itself. So 7 squared is 49. Okay, so let's write 49. And now, uh, 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 we've got to turn this into an improper fraction. We can't do this as a mixed number. So we're going to write this as 21 plus 1 is 22 over 7. Now, I always like to, when I have a whole number like that, put that over 1, okay? And then you can see that the last step is we're going to cancel the 7 against the 49. That's actually why they had us use this one. It just makes it a little simpler at that point. I'm going to let you finish that one. Let's look at this one, area of a rectangle. Again, if we look back at the formulas, area of a rectangle, oh, that's simple, length times width. All right? So the length is 2 and 3 fourths times 2 and 1 fourth. <clears throat> and I'm just going to tell you here, this is a simple problem, but it looks complicated because we're doing fractions turn the fractions into improper fractions, okay? 8 plus 3, 11, so 11 over 4, and then what would this be? 9 over 4, okay? And then you just multiply straight across, simplify your answer, and you're done. Easy. Area of a triangle, that one's a little trickier. That's the third one down here. Area equals 1 half times the base times the height. So, we're going to say 1 half times, or put parentheses, 5 and 2 fifths, and 3 and 1 third. So, I'm just plugging in the height for H, 5 and 2 fifths in place of B, which is the base in this formula. 
Okay, then it's just like we were doing in the previous section before uh, the checkup and all. We just follow the order of operations. In this case, everything is just being multiplied together. Again, turn this into an improper fraction, 27 fifths and nine over three, or 10, 10 over three, and then one half. So you're gonna just multiply all of them together. 27 over five, 10 over three, okay? And now I would, before I would multiply it and solve it, I would try to cancel, oh, look at this. Five will cancel against the 10 and give me two. The two will cancel against the two. Three cancels against the 27. Wow, that's an easy one to finish. I'm not gonna finish it for you, okay? And uh, well, I think that should take you up through page 37. I do wanna talk about page 38, um, 39, and 40 before you try to go any further, okay?